Okay, so this first technique is about matching values. So you're doing short strokes. I, I'm just showing you here, you don't have to follow along with me. But I'm going all one direction with my stroke. Although technically to blend, you could either go the same direction or you could curve your stroke or you could do an X pattern. The thing with this technique, it's a dry brush technique with very little moisture on your brush from water but you're going from one value and you're slowly shifting that value to the value you want. In this case, I'm using black and white, so there's no uh, color added to it. It's just a black and white, and that's for contrast. So I'm trying to go from black and I'm going to a lighter shade of gray. So what I wanna show you here is how to blend, but also how to get a blurred edge. A blurred edge is an edge that is slightly out of focus. You want a picture like a camera lens that has been turned slightly so it's just hazy enough and to give some like kind of distortion so you can't quite see clearly. That's our goal here. This is going to be a type of edge that you're really going to need but what I'm showing you is also how to blend. So if you're going to try and do something like let's say a metal cylinder you would have the capability of doing that if you went value by value down. So here's what I'm doing. I have a brush that I have for darks and I have a separate brush for lights. And that lighter brush um, is what I'm using to get that to transition. So this is essentially a gradient. You can see where the darker area hits the gray area. It's a little bit blurry, a little bit hazy, kind of like a mist. That's it, that's what you wanna create. Here is another method. I'm using a sphere as a demonstration and I painted the background black. This method is called a wet into wet. So it means that the uh, black paint in the background is wet, but so is the gray paint that I have on the, my brush right now. And the, the deal is you have to have at least two brushes and I push the silver paint into the black paint and I, there's kind of a back and forth that you'll see happening here and they'll start to blend. This is the same kind of procedure that I'd use if I were working in oil paint. So there's the black and there's the white, but again, two separate brushes. And what that does is it blurs the edge just a little bit. There's also something called a lost and found edge where the edge disappears for a second. One of the ways you can also soften an edge is to get very close in value to what you're trying to blend to. So if the background's dark, um, that edge could get lost if I did a form shadow on the sphere, almost the same value, but just like a degree lighter. So you can lose an edge through value, but also by blending. And again, this paint is wet, so I'm working pretty quickly. That's the, the downside of working with acrylics is they dry super fast, so it's hard to get the soft edge. But you can see that's what I'm doing. I'm using multiple brushes to push one body of paint into the other, and I have multiple brushes in my hand so I can just alternate between the two and dip one in the darker hue and dip the other in the lighter one. I'm telling you about these techniques so that you understand that that's one of the things I'm looking for as you approach your fruit paintings, that you have some edges that are blurred, some that are sharp, and some that are lost and found.